Now let's take a look at a couple different schools of thought concerning macroeconomics that have emerged in the past century or so. The classical school believes that the economy is self-regulating and is always at full employment. The neoclassical view is that the business cycle fluctuations that occur in an economy are efficient responses of a well-functioning market economy that is just bombarded by shocks of an uneven pace of technological development. Aggregate demand fluctuates, and in the classical view, technological change is the most significant influence on aggregate demand and aggregate supply. New technology that increases the productivity of capital, for example, will increase aggregate demand because firms increase investment to purchase this technology. The aggregate supply, um, short and aggregate supply, responds to this increase in aggregate demand. Um, the classical view, however, sees that money wage rate that is behind short and aggregate supply is flexible, it's not sticky, so it, it adjusts quickly to maintain equilibrium in the labor market and thus maintains long-run macroeconomic equilibrium. Potential GDP fluctuates due to technology, and when the pace of technology increase is fast, then potential GDP and real GDP tend to grow quickly. Classical policy emphasizes the potential for taxes to reduce incentives and create inefficiencies. So by minimizing taxes, employment, investment, and technology are at their efficient levels, and the economy expands at an appropriate pace. Keynesian macroeconomists believe that the economy would rarely operate at full employment if it, if it is left alone, and it needs help from fiscal and monetary policy. Aggregate demand fluctuations occur due to expectations. Expectations are the most significant factor on aggregate demand, that influence aggregate demand. These expectations are believed to rely on kind of a herd instinct. For example, if we have a whole bunch of companies, the entire country may, may be fearing uh, or having a lot, like pessimistic thoughts about profits, then that in itself could cause aggregate demand to fall. Just the thought, just the idea of um, people's profits falling. The aggregate supply the Keynesian macroeconomists believe that the money wage rate is sticky in the downward direction, so people are not willing to accept lower wages for the greater good, let's put it that way. And so the money wage rate does not fall. If there is a recessionary gap, then there is no automatic mechanism to get rid of it. So the new Keynesian view states that the wage rate is sticky and the prices of goods and services are sticky. And so with a sticky price level, the short and aggregate supply curve is horizontal at a fixed price level. The policy response that is suggested is that we use fiscal and monetary policy to offset changes in aggregate demand. So by stimulating aggregate demand during a recession, for example, full employment can be restored. Monetarist uh, macroeconomists believe that the economy is self-regulating and that it will normally operate at full employment, provided that monetary policy is not erratic and that the pace of money growth is kept relatively steady. Aggregate demand fluctuations um, occur due to a change in the quantity of money. That is the most significant influence on aggregate demand, according to the monetary school. If a central bank decreases the money supply abruptly or slows it down abruptly, then the economy will go into recession because aggregate demand will decrease. Macroeconomists from the monetary school, school believe that all recessions result from an inappropriate use of monetary policy. Aggregate supply is believed to be sticky because money wage rate is believed to be sticky. If the economy is in a recession, then it will take a long time to return to full employment. Monetarist economists, macroeconomists, believe that taxes should be kept low to avoid disincentive effects that increase, sorry, that decrease potential GDP. Um, provided that money growth is steady, then they say that no stabilization is really needed to offset changes in aggregate demand because the changes in the quantity of money will do that for them. That was the lecture on aggregate supply and aggregate demand.